two Italian brothers produce recordings of what they claim are secret Soviet space missions. There's this recording that's released that seems to be of a female cosmonaut screaming in agony as her reentry capsule burns up in the atmosphere. Are they evidence of a massive cover-up? Almost half of the original cosmonaut group vanished before flying, and they vanished from the group photographs as well. They were airbrushed from history. The darkness of space hides many secrets. Few people have the technology to see or hear what happens beyond our own planet. Fewer still can be trusted. February 1961, the space race enters a new and dangerous phase. Yuri Gagarin's triumphant man mission is still two months away. Two Italian brothers have front row seats for the action. The two most famous private space listeners were the Utica Cordelia brothers in Turin, Italy. Even as NASA and the Soviets had multi-million dollar communication rigs, they were using home-built shortwave equipment to tune in to both American and Russian spaceflight. Achille and Giovanni are self-taught radio enthusiasts who built their own apparatus to monitor radio transmissions from space. The brothers scavenged equipment, yeah, World War II surplus, donated equipment, whatever they could find, and made a listening post in a building outside of Turin with an antenna on a roof that they would point by hand at outer space. The brothers' home-built radio surveillance rig gives them an inside track on Soviet space activity. These brothers were listening to signals, interpreting the speed to the signals, guessing about the altitude of the satellites, and learning what was going on, even if official sources wouldn't talk about it. Weeks before Yuri Gagarin officially becomes the first man in space, the brothers make a shocking announcement. They claim to have tracked and recorded a manned Russian mission already orbiting our planet. The brothers heard a signal, a repetitive signal, which they interpreted as a heartbeat. They played their tape to their father, who was a cardiologist, and he concluded from the high rate, the high pulse rate, that it was a man who was nearing cardiac arrest, a dying cosmonaut. Could this recording really be evidence of secret Soviet missions? The brothers' story explodes in the world's press, who are eager to highlight a Russian failure. People are thinking, are the Soviets telling us everything about their track record in space? Are there cosmonauts who have paid the ultimate price and that we'll never hear about? Experts cast doubt on the idea that Russia secretly launched a man into space. You could do secret launches of hardware, much harder to do a secret launch of a human being and get away with it. There is an alternative explanation for what the brothers heard. At the time they made the recording, the Russians had just put four dogs into orbit on test flights. The satellite they were listening to was carrying some dogs and the natural heart rate of a dog is much higher than humans. If they were hearing the dog's heart rate and thought it was a person, they would misinterpret it to be a dying person. But the truth about this recording doesn't come out for years. The brothers become famous. In the 1960s, of course, the whole world was space crazy. Utica Cordelia brothers were very popular. They were they were media stars in Italy and around the world. Riding the wave of their popularity, the brothers release another extraordinary recording, apparently showing another cosmonaut in distress. There's this recording that's released that seems to be of a female cosmonaut screaming in agony as her reentry capsule burns up in the atmosphere. But expert analysis of the recording reveals inconsistencies. Why did this female cosmonaut not adhere to standard communication protocols?
Some believe the recording could have come from a supposedly unmanned Russian spacecraft that was in space at the time, Venera 2. There are other issues with the recordings. Did the brothers really have the kind of communications equipment capable of recording this kind of transmission? In hindsight, the problem with the brothers' recordings is that first, no one else was hearing these signals. And secondly, they were picking them up when the satellites were supposedly thousands of miles away. They were out of range. No one else, even NASA, figured out how to do that. Expert analysis suggests the brothers' recordings were no more than an elaborate hoax. But why was the West so quick to support two amateur radio enthusiasts' wild claims about dying Russian cosmonauts? Having two very telegenic and, and enthusiastic young Italians say that they had outsmarted the entire Soviet cover-up was good press. People wanted to believe that the lead that the Soviets had was because of their disregard for the lives of their cosmonauts and not because of their technological sophistication. The brothers did not uncover a Soviet space cover-up, but recently discovered evidence reveals that there were good reasons for the West to be suspicious. The Soviet space program was run by their military. In the fall of 1960, the Russians had a secret mission. The problem was it exploded on launch, killing 165 people. Those deaths were not reported on because they reflected on the Soviet Union and they were a propaganda disaster. The Russians did not acknowledge that until after the fall of the Soviet Union. Despite the evidence of a genuine cover-up, there is no doubt surrounding the greatest achievement of the Soviet space program. Gagarin was the first man to go into space and come back alive. And he didn't know what was going to happen when he sat in that capsule. And for that, the world honors him.